The SID Display Week here with Corning, and uh, who are you? Hi, I'm Brittany Salgado, and I am Manager of Marketing and Staff Communications for Corning Glass Technologies. So Corning is famous for being the Gorilla Glass. Um, yeah, that's one of the glasses that we produce. So we're a 165-year-old company with um, deep material science expertise, and we're here 165 today. 165 years old? Yeah, 165. Doing glass all the yes, time? Yes, yes, yeah. Where did those glass go? Where does glass go? Glass is found in a variety of applications. Today we're here talking about a lot of consumer uh, electronic applications and some cutting edge um, work that we're doing in the auto space. And so I actually have a gentleman here named John McQuery who yeah. can talk to you about some of the work that we're doing to advance glass in autos. What, what can I tell you about Gorilla in the automotive space? But this looks pretty awesome. So what's it going is. here? Is this, is this the future of cars? We hope so. So this is an example of what you can do with uh, Gorilla Glass. Uh, it is the, uh, the, the benefits are being able to shape glass uh, into the automotive uh, environment with minimal cost because you're finishing the glass in a flat space. This is Probably. a corn formed uh, Yes, angle. best described like this. So you start with a fat, flat piece of glass and because of the strength of Gorilla, you're actually able to what we say cold form it. Cold form? Yes, so you're supporting it, you're putting it into shape without adding any heat. So, a uh, very inexpensive way to get desirable shapes. And in addition, you can finish the glass in a flat form, which is the most cost-effective way to do it. Is, is this glass? That is glass. That is Gorilla Glass. That's the glass right here? Yes, glass that you like see the right here. Kind of glass that's used for glass the like same kind of glass, a version of the glass that you fell in love with in this device. And uh, is this also shaped everywhere? Uh, yes, you see uh, concave and convex uh, radii here. And so you'll be able to, uh, to put displays in flat glass and in shapes. Uh, this is a curved display uh, from our friends at JDI, who are right across the way here. Is it uh, uh, maybe an OLED or uh, that's LCD? 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 Yes. So you work with anything? Uh, we do. Uh, whatever the display manufacturers can uh, work on, uh, okay. we will be able to, uh, uh, to build a solution for with cover glass. Nice. How far in the future is this? Uh, this is today. Today. So this but is today, any, anything and, a, this? and a better example of today is this. So that is uh, logically a part that is more for demonstration purposes. Uh, this is more uh, like what you might see in a specif auto specification today. All right, that's great. Can can you introduce? Uh, uh, let's, let's walk around the Brittany, booth. If you, if you I need to hand it back to my hey, friend. Sure. <laughs> let's let's check some of the other stuff that you have okay, around here. Let's do it. So I'm going to introduce you to Steve Hossel, and he's going to talk about some of the work that we're doing in semiconductor packaging towards microelectronics and other applications. Hello, so who are you? Uh, I'm Steve Hossel. I'm the manager of new business development for a Pre Precision Glass Solutions Division. So what are we looking at here? It says, it says Corning on a piece of glass. Uh, these these uh, wafers are for through glass vias. And what you're doing is you're, you're metallizing the glass, and the holes are somewhere between 10 and 30 microns and it allows you to do wafer level interconnect packaging. So it reduces the, the size and the height, which is important. So as you move to uh, mobile devices. Right now there's like a, a, maybe over here there's a PCB. Yes. And uh, the PCB is like long like this, but you are suggesting that you could have maybe like a chip and connecting through a piece of glass right here? Correct. That's so, so it's interconnect technology. And the glass can be as thin as 100 microns. So what the you're thinness. doing... The thinness. The thinness. And you have a metallization layer, be aluminum, or copper, or gold. And it allows you to have a, a real direct interconnect, which reduces the resistivity, which will extend the battery life on mobile devices. So uh, this right here has a whole bunch of holes? Yes. Even though I can't really feel them because it's so small. Yes. How small? The ten, the as I said, they can go down to as small as 10 microns. That's very small, right? So a uh, strand of hair is 30 microns. So three times smaller than yes. hair? Yes. You have holes that are um, reliably going to root through any yes. any uh, uh, connection in a PCB. Well, what you, what you have to do is you have to metalize, the, metalize this. You fill those holes with a metal and then you, you um, bond it to the wafer and you're able to then connect electrically through that via, through that metallization to, to the PCB. Because the glass is 100% reliably not going to conduct the, in, the correct. power, right? That's correct. 100%? Yes. And so you can it's have... A, it's a, glass is a great insulator. Yeah. And, and so you can have uh, maybe a chip, an ARM processor, that has a whole bunch of connectors in the back that go directly on your glass. Yes. And each of them 
with roots to the PCB and the PCB design will change forever if yes. this happens, yeah. right? How For, far are you with this? Um, it's still in some very, very early stages. But I think with the, the motivation for Corning to create precision glass solutions was the consumer electronics and the internet of things. You know, as you go, as we look at what's happening, more and more mobile devices and more and more MEMS type switches will be incorporated throughout. So one way to do uh, the future of the consumer electronic of everything, through glass. Yes. Not just for the display and touch and stuff. Correct. But inside. Yes. You won't know this glass inside to make it better. That's absolutely and correct. You can make a huge one like this. What would be the application to have a big one like that? So, as the as the technology matures, right now this form factor is because this is how devices are made. Wafers are round because silicon is grown in ingots and they're round. As you start looking for to broaden this, we can do panel level application. So. This is easy right now for manufacturers to use. This is probably the future. The future because for, panel. For panels. Because there will be electronics all over the panel. So if you look at the PCB in here, if you start to you could start to do Usually for a TV it's just one PCB is somewhere right. connected to a panel that just has one but, but, function. But you can create thousands of the of the PCBs on this piece of glass. And that means there will be local electronics all over the display? Correct, yes. What's the advantage of that? Well, then, you, then you cut it, but it's a, it, it reduces the manufacturing costs. Okay, nice to meet you guys. So this is called uh, Precision Glass? Solutions. And, and your solution just has this working. You can. Is it expensive or not to make these holes and put them where you want? And That's, you have to have mass production for this to be affordable? That it's, it's really uh, relates to the volume. So, so as as it grows in in volume, the pricing will become uh, much more aggressive. When did you start showing this technology? And uh, it's been within the last six to nine months. So it's very new. Yes. It's not out there yet in the market. Uh, it is also out in the market. It is already in the market. Yes. So there might be some very small devices out there that are enabled because of you. Yes. All right. So we're looking forward to what's going to happen in the future. That's cool. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Okay, I'm gonna check out some other. Oh, thanks a lot. Sure. Hi. Hi. So now I'll introduce you to Claire Fon, who can talk about our Iris Glass product for um, edgelet LCD, very thin TV. So this is for the TV business. So you're not only in a smartphone, you're not only inside the smartphone in the future in the car. You on the TV? Is it already a big deal? It's a big deal. Shipping already? Hello. Yeah. Hi. How are you? So we also not only TV, we also have the monitor on the side. We can come all that so uh, are these are shipping. Yes, this is all commercial available right now. So um, here I'm looking at 55 inch 4K. Yes. And what does it enable? Small bezel? Yes, um, because of the the glass being able to oh, sorry yeah. so because glass itself we can has a very low to yeah. have a low okay have a very low um, it, it won't be impacted by the heat and also doesn't absorb moisture that's the reason why you can have a very thin design and also we can have a, because the uh, rigidity of the glass you also can have a very struct have a very good structural design for your TV so so it's not going to break it's uh, it keeps keeps it strong even if you have a tiny bezel yes and also it won't expand because of humidity or moisture so you can see that you can have a very thin design so bezel-less design you still can, can have um, and you call this advanced light guide so what does it do to the light you you are guiding the light Yes, and we have a very minimal color shift and also very outstanding um, transmi transmission to the light so you can have a very bright TV and also have an accurate color. All right. So has it been shipping in, in, uh, in, in 4K TVs for a long time? Uh, we just have uh, some product launched last year. It's, it's and also, new. Yes, also some uh, more product will be launched this year as well. And also we will have a, a monitor available in the market by the end of this year. Cool. So there's lots of new markets happening to Corning, right? Yeah, sure. Lots of new areas. Yeah, absolutely. So I can actually introduce you next to Dr. Brad Bowden. And um, Brad can talk to you a little bit about our Lotus NXT product, which is optimized for high-resolution displays. So, so high-resolution? 
solution, smartphone kind of displays? Exactly, so Brad's the, the expert in this area and you can talk Great. to you about that. Great, oh. yeah, so um, Lotus NXT is a high performance display glass substrate. So first I'll just tell you what we mean by high performance displays. Those are displays that employ um, unique TFT backplane technology like Oxide TFT or LTPS. Um, those backplane technologies require um, high temperature processes, so you need a glass that's very dimensionally stable under high temperatures. Does so, that help for the for the curved ones or no? Yeah, exactly. So Lotus NXT actually we just announced um, that it is used uh, on the Galaxy S8, which uses a polyimid uh, flexible OLED display and uh, Lotus NXT is used as a carrier glass. So the polyimid itself can't support um, the thermal load or the, the stresses of the film, so we use NXT as a carrier glass, and uh, that imparts this dimensional stability to the polyimid as it's being processed. So this is how Samsung is able to do those edge devices, is because this glass, it's still flexible under, but... Uh, Exactly. It's so you conform so, to the glass. So you want to have the flexibility of the polyimid when you put it into the display, but when you're actually mass producing the display itself, that flexibility can be a disadvantage. So we use a rigid, dimensionally stable carrier glass to support the polyimid during the display manufacturing process. So right here, there's, uh, this is the S8? Yep, so that's the S8. And, and that has you make it possible, because, thanks to Corning. Exactly, yep. That has a, a flexible polyimid display in it and it is processed on a Lotus NXT carrier. All right, so um, very strong, not, doesn't scratch. A device like this is not going to scratch? Well, so the surface of this has Gorilla Glass 5 and that's designed to be um, very resistant to scratches and then also primarily designed um, to enable um, better drop performance um, relative to previous versions of Gorilla Glass. Uh, is it going to be possible that Corning is going to be unbreakable at some point? Well, you know, I mean, that's one of the fundamental challenges of glass. So we're always uh, doing research and always um, developing new technology. And that's, you know, one of the ultimate goals, of course. How do you do this stuff? How does it work? How can you make glass stronger? That's the core of your business, right? Um, yeah, so I mean, that's definitely one of Corning's core capabilities. And, um, you know, we design the chemistry and process um, associated with glass to make it um, you know, ever tougher and stronger. Every this generations and gets better and better. And that's right. And uh, it still needs to be very beautiful to look at, right? Yeah, of course. You can't just have a big, thick yeah. piece of glass. Well, and that's one of the advantages of our fusion process that we use to make the glass. <coughs> um, because the glass overflows a trough and reconnects at the bottom, um, that allows us to make glass with a pristine surface. Yep. Um, and then that, uh, you know, that surface has very um, you know, good surface finish right out of our, directly out of our manufacturing process. Cool, that looks awesome. All right, okay. thanks a lot. Yep, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. And you okay, also have stuff with, yes. yeah, you have a... So now I'm gonna take you over to the Gorilla Glass for Consumer Electronics area, and they can talk about why Gorilla has been featured on more than five billion devices worldwide, and it's tough, so, yet beautiful. Five billion? Yes, over Very, five billion devices. How's it going? Hello, so who are you? So my name is Steve Robinson. I'm a product manager for Corning Gorilla Glass. Um, do you have a specific question? Yeah, so uh, five billion devices shipped? Uh, yeah, over the life of Gorilla Glass. That's been a few years, right? It has been. We've actually, Decade or? We launched, uh, yeah, we launched Gorilla Glass 10 years ago. Um, and so what we're showcasing today, just kind of as an overview, we have Corning Gorilla Glass 5, which is our latest generation of Gorilla Glass. Um, you know, primarily the designed and optimized around drop performance. You know, uh, typical testing is, um, you know, we drop from 1.6 meters with uh, up to 80% survivability. Uh, is it easy to replace a, cor uh, a, a Corning when people drop it and they want to get it replaced in a cheap store? You know that replaces in a cheap stuff? store. <laughs> Do they get to replace with your glass again, or you don't ship it like empty? Uh, yeah, so typically what we do is we supply the glass to uh, we supply the glass to the phone manufacturers, and it's up to them to decide how they're going to use that, you know, through their supply chains and then life cycle. And uh, what are you showing here? Plastic, soda lime. What's going on here? Yeah, so this video is uh, we actually have quite a few of these videos up on our website. Uh, this is basically going through some of the value props for uh, Gorilla Glass, some of the testing that we do. Um, some of the big things, just uh, from a high-level drop performance. You know, there's a video on drop performance, you know, face drop on the concrete, uh, rough surfaces. The next thing is scratch performance. It's actually what's happening here. Um, and then, so how do you optimize for scratch? So it's all around the characteristics of the glass. You know, um, there's some information again on our website. 
um, around the characters, the characterization. But uh, process uh, standpoint, we use our fusion draw technology to create a glass, a pristine glass surface, and then we do a chemical strengthening through an ion exchange process. And this generation is because it's just a lot of work to get it better every time you get it. I mean, well, you know, just, frankly, we're we're constantly learning, and Corning is constantly innovating. You know, we're wanting to put the best glass out there that we can. Um, and we're learning more and more about the industry. We're learning more about, you know, changing trends in handheld phone devices and then IT devices as well. So you are in lots of laptops? Uh, we are in several laptops. Where's it new? To be in big, just like this. Sorry? All the touch, the two-in-ones, they need this kind of stuff. Also. Exactly. So this is, this is an example of a Acer Spin 7. It actually uses a Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on, the, on their touch screen. There. What are you showing uh, like this? What yeah, so this is the second product line that we have. It's the Vibrant Corning Gorilla Glass. And the idea here is really photorealistic uh, images um, with a proprietary Corning Inject technology with the uh, durability and the protection of Gorilla Glass on the front. So it's just uh, pictures? It is. It's, it's pictures. And, uh, you know, this is an example here. This is the Acer Chromebook 14. Um, the idea is you can use that Inject technology to come up with a uh, like I said, photorealistic images, um, and then manufacturers can customize how they want. Um, and these are examples ah, this of plates. This is the back of the device. Ah, so this is for the exactly. putting right so here. You could, you could imagine, you know, sometime in the future, being able to customize with your own images on your own devices. Laptops, tablets, even the back of your phone. So it looks like kind of like a screen. It does. It looks a little bit like it. That's the example that we have here. Uh, so, um, you're the leader in this business, right? There, there's some Am I the leader? <laughs> I'm a product manager, yes. Yeah, but the Corning is the leader in this in this business of doing uh, glass yes. for devices. Five billion shipped. Mm -hmm. Nobody's near, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the competitors, the, the, they, they just can't get to your quality? Like this well, so I can't, I can't necessarily speak about uh, competitors and, and what they're doing. What I can tell you, though, um, is we're striving to provide the best quality and um, toughest glass in the in the industry especially from a covered glass standpoint